Today we're going to cover fans. Three different types of technologies. We're going to talk about their pros and cons, where you might use one type of fan and where you're going to use and get a way better outcome using a better quality fan. Okay guys, so today we've got an expert, Sean from Atma. We're gonna be talking about these exhaust fans. First up, Sean, the traditional exhaust fan. Can I just say, and I'd love to be the first one to say this, that these are only really useful to be in a port loo or a brick shit house. Well, uh, this is the most common type of fan you'd see in Australia yep. because they're cheap. They're cheap and simple but there's some drawbacks to them. First one is that you can't use them in modern construction because they don't have a damper on them. You can't connect ductwork to it. The National Construction Code says now you have to duct the exhaust outside because it's not good to just push that exhaust into the roof space. Yep, so when you say outside, that's out of the roof, out via the roof or out via an eave. Um, There's lots of different ways to duct it outdoors, but it yeah. really means outdoors, yeah, yeah, not yeah. in the roof space. Because yeah. in the roof space, this is a perfect location. It gets really cold, high humidity air from a shower going straight into this roof area. It'll grow mold pretty quickly. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. So some basic features about this type of fan. One is it has only a couple blades. This has three blades on it. And with each one, each blade, there's a lot of clearance between the tip of the fan and the housing. So there's basically a lot of space for air to slip back. It can't handle high back pressure. So if there's any back pressure in front of it, the flow is greatly reduced. So yeah, I mean, this is one fan that, that, that is in a lot of old construction that um, they're actually installing draft stoppers on top of as well. Yep. But a lot of dust, insulation particles comes from the roof down these sorts of exhaust fans when they're not running. Yep. So Sean, We've got this type of fan. What are these others? So this is an axial fan. Yep. This is a centrifugal fan. And this is an inline fan, yep. mixed flow. Right. You saw that one had three blades on it. This one, I counted, it has 55 blades inside. Yep. So it handles back pressure very, very well because it has 55 blades to push against back pressure. So this is made to be ducted outdoors. There's an exhaust. Uh, on the side here, it comes with a, a damper that we've removed for this discussion. It's meant to be ducted outside and handle a lot of back pressure. So Sean, this sort of works like a water mill. Like it's just picking up, scooping up air and shoving it through this orifice 55 here. little scoops there. Yeah, yeah nice. each, each uh, blade is another force pushing on the, on the air. So it'd be really tough for any air, if there is a bit of pressure here for it to sort of get pushed back in, this will be able to handle heaps of pressure. That's right, it's yep. designed to do that. So it'll get the same amount of airflow, even though the pressure might be 50, 60 pascals in the bathroom, it'll get the airflow that it needs to just move. Absolutely, yep. Wonderful. So this is a fan that a lot of people might not be familiar with. It's in line and it's usually up in the roof somewhere, mounted uh, in the timbers or structure of the roof. So it will be very quiet in its operation. Sean, can you go through a bit of a description on how this fan moves air? Sure, so one reason why you might not really know it's there is that, yeah, it is remote mounted. So there's ductwork coming from the register and the ceiling to the inlet and then uh, the outlet. This is mounted in the ceiling somewhere and you don't see it. It has some of the same design principles as the centrifugal fan. This one has eight blades and a lot closer clearance. So this works well against high static pressure. It's also quiet and efficient. So this particular fan will be mounted to a ceiling and will be presented as a, uh, as a grill like this on your ceiling. This one also has its own damper integrated into it, which is nice because then you've got your air barrier largely in line with the damper directly on the ceiling. So Sean, to just break this all down, let's talk about performance, so airflow, sound, how much sound they make, and then cost. What have we got here? So this one's a simple, uh, low cost fan. It's yep. uh, the most affordable of, of all of these, and it has a small motor, still uses a decent amount of energy, but the performance of them, uh, they, they move air, move significant air, only when there's nothing blocking them, if there's no obstructions. So any obstructions and they move a lot less air. So critical to have doors open when using these and, uh, and that you've got some sort of connection of air to allow to go through it from outside. For it to get 
its rated flow, it needs to have basically zero pressure yeah. working against. Yep. So these ones have ductwork attached to them. And so they have to deal with sometimes bad duct installation. Mm. That's just a reality. And uh, no duct installation is totally perfect. So you got to deal with that situation. Yep. Same thing with, with the inline fan. They have ductwork that they have to compensate for. Yep, yep. So they've got so a lot of pressure. The thing is that to compare these, you have to sort of compare them on the basis of how they'll be used in real life. Yep. This one's just used in the ceiling and it's yep. exhausting to a roof space. As it is. This one is connected to ductwork. And so they have the nameplate ratings on these. Mm. Uh, this one, the sound and power consumption and airflow is based on no back, back pressure at all. Yeah. Whereas this one needs to be rated when it's installed with ductwork. Yeah and the sound is affected by ductwork. So the thing is, both of these types of fans actually work really well against high back pressure. And they also are quiet against high back pressure, and they're also energy efficient against high back pressure. So really, you can't compare this to these at all, to Not a certain really. degree, it's that bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about cost for both these units. Um, outside of the actual installations, uh, what, what, what about the actual cost of the fans? So these ones are probably a couple times the, the price of an axial fan mm -hmm. because they have ductwork as well mm -hmm. that you have to also factor that into the cost. Sure. This has ductwork on the outlet yep. uh, going to the outside. Yep. This has ductwork from the inlet from the living space and then also on the outlet. So it has yeah. two sets of ductwork. Yep. These might have a damper integrated. These also might have a damper integrated or you can use a damper at the end of the duct run. Sure. So those are added uh, installation costs. So Sean, the axial fan just can't handle any pressure, whereas these guys, they're overcoming ductwork, they're overcoming a draft stopper or a damper. So really, I mean, there's no place for this axial fan in modern day construction where we're heading towards building performance, air tightness and insulation consistency. If you're using it to extract moisture, your roof space or building cavity is a dumb place to put moisture. Yeah, you want to put that outside. Correct. Any pollutants, you're using fan to get rid of pollutants. Don't put the pollutants somewhere else in your building. Get them outside. Correct. That's what it's for. All right, so Sean, when would you use or, or leverage off these different technologies uh, in a home? Well, really, you need fans to do two different things. Yep. One is you need intermittent ventilation, yep. and then you should have continuous ventilation uh -huh. as well because there's pollutants that come from at both sources. So mm. the stuff that gathers really quickly, like mm. say you take a shower and you have a lot of water in the air, and then there's also pollutants that gather over time. So yep. imagine if all you had was an axial fan that was extracting during your shower, but then you turn it off. Yeah. Don't tell me that after even a timer delay of 20 minutes yeah. that your bathroom is completely dry. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Your towels take a long time to dry off. Sure. Your shower takes a long time to dry off. Yeah. The moisture needs to be diluted and removed slowly over time. That's why building codes abroad also require, in addition to intermittent ventilation, mm -hmm. they require continuous ventilation to yeah. get rid of those pollutants that gather more slowly over time. Things, not just moisture, which every moment you breathe, you're adding moisture vapor to the air. But there's also things like uh, VOCs, formaldehyde, other, other pollutants that gather constantly in your living space that need to be diluted yep. over time. Yep. That's why continuous ventilation should be a standard in modern efficient construction. So you can potentially have continuous uh, low flow ventilation and then some sort of a boost that comes on to just when you need it, yeah. that it, it moves more air. This one actually has it. right on it a dial. So mm -hmm. you, it has a, a switch here that you can say yeah. how many cubic meters an hour of airflow you need. During intermittent operation, it runs at full speed, but then uh, you can set it to run at a lower speed during its off time. Yeah. It can run continuously at low speed, and then when you turn the, the light switch on, it boosts up. Yep. This one actually has an occupancy sensor as well. So that's another way to do it. So when you come in to take a shower, yep. it boosts up to remove that moisture very quickly, sure. but then it go reverts to a low speed continuous ventilation rate. Yep. Now, can we also just touch on, these can handle back pressure, right? They can get the air that they want within the grounds of a certain pressure range. Where will the air come from to exhaust in a normal home, in a conventional home? And where should we be avoiding getting fresh air to come from or to get air from in order to exhaust something that we're trying to exhaust? The air, makeup air for this is gonna come from wherever it can come from. So it's gonna come from 
uh, leaks in your doors and windows. Right, from, that's a good place that we might get a leak, right? That's or a least relatively, it can be... relatively clean, clean source. Yes. So places that you don't want your makeup air coming from would be under floor space yeah. or from an attached garage. Yeah. So that's why you want a good air seal from those undesirable places. In the US, um, they've got a really strong regime for testing these exhaust fans for homes in the United States of America, right? Yep. Every Energy Star fan gets tested for very rigorous uh, performance. It gets tested for sound and airflow and energy efficiency to be called an Energy Star fan. So it's rated for continuous use, can handle years of nonstop use and still be efficient and effective. There are hundreds of Energy Star qualified products yeah. and that testing regime, we need that in Australia. All right, so let's get into just showing people how pressure works and how an axial fan can't get the air that it needs to move when it's been restricted and then yeah just compare it to one of these fans to highlight the difference so here's a quick demonstration with an axial fan we've got a flow hood sitting on top of the actual fan which sean will go into detail on what we're doing there so this flow hood is compensating for any pressure that's building up in here so it's trying to measure the real airflow through this and then we've got a pressure inside the box 14 pa so now i'm going to restrict the airflow from this door vent. It's a beautiful looking door vent. We call it Q vent. And now the pressure will have gone up inside the box because it's not getting the same airflow. And then you'll be able to see what flow the fan can now maintain with just the general leakiness of this box that we've made. So the flow went from 38 liters per second down to 14 liters per second. We're now hooked up the inline fan. Uh, we're giving it supply air from the Q vent, and Sean's getting a reading on the flows of that. 56 liters 56 per second. 56 liters a second. We've got the uh, enclosure sitting at 23 pascal. The pressure's going up. It's been restricted. The pressure's gone up to 80 pascal. Let's have a look at what it's done to the flow. 42 liters per second down from 56. Let's go over these results. Stigmatizing, I mean, this is just pretty rudimentary. Energy Star in the US goes into a lot more detail. So yeah, let's, let's review these results. So just a basic fact that we can show, the yeah. axial fan is much more affected by back pressure yeah. than the inline fan, even with the ductwork attached to the inline fan. We saw a pressure increase of roughly 43% from uh, blocking off yep. the makeup air pathway there. So yep. what that did was, reduce the airflow through the axial fan by 63%. <laughs> Jesus. But the inline fan, yeah. uh, blocking off the makeup air, made the pressure go up by 277%. Jesus. But the flow was only reduced by 23%. Wow. So even in the face of massive static pressure, yeah. the inline fan or a centrifugal fan can really handle the pressure. Another thing that's really important, like say you were using the bathroom and you want that fan to do its job, yeah. right? And what this means is a simple axial fan not going to be able to handle the pressure, so it's not going to do much exhausting of yeah. pollutants. It's only really going to work if the door was open, which obviously you're not going to have the door open. And as soon as you leave, you turn off the fan. So yeah. it's basically not done much for you. Whereas an, a centrifugal fan or one of these mixed flow inline fans yeah. is going to suck no matter what, yep. it's going to do its job. Yep. Now, a lot of people talk about for makeup air that you just have an undercut on the door at the bottom of the door. It might make a bit of a difference, but you know, in some cases you might have had an undercut door, someone's installed carpet or whatever, and, and that hole just gets significantly reduced, doesn't it? Yep. You still might not be getting the makeup air that you need. What about opening up windows in, in bathrooms? And we can cover this very quick, very quickly. Um, you can let fresh air via the bathroom itself. I guess the only issue with that is that it's usually cold air and it can't store more moisture. So you get way more constant dumping of uh, high humidity, uh, high humidity that comes from the shower straight inside your roof area or on the fan face or because cold air just can't store the same amount of moisture to move it out. Well, that's one thing. If you have your windows open to the outside, your bathroom uh, yes, it's more ventilated, but it's also yeah. going to be much colder, yeah. which colder surfaces mean the air is going to hit surfaces below the dew point yep. a lot faster. Yep. So opening the window paradoxically 
can make the potential for condensation even worse. Yeah. All right, well, I think this is going to be a bit of a series video that we're going to start making where we're actually reviewing different fans that we find available in the open market. So this is going to be a bit of a common thing that we walk through and try and find the best ventilation fans that we can find on the market and maybe even the worst.